Hey everybody, so this is Evan with Scott Leroy Marketing. Today we are going over the team websites on command. So for the team websites, you do have to have the new website platform launched on your command in order to fully launch the team sites and have full access. So if you have not launched your new sites yet, that will be the first step in creating your team site. Uh, with the team sites, only team members that have enhanced or unlimited permissions on the team are going to have access to edit the team marketing profile. So if you are not able to access that to set up your team website, it may be due to your team permissions level, and those might need to be adjusted on the back end through the Rainmaker account. So first, we're going to go ahead and start off on our um, command login screen, agent.kw.com. Um, so just go ahead and make sure you log in with your KW username and password. Just a friendly reminder, the username is not case sensitive. However, the password is. So just be sure that you're making sure there's any capitalization um, where it needs to be and that you are not adding a space before you enter the password or after, bef um, after before you hit the enter, because that will not allow you access either. So just be careful of that. Alrighty, so next is going to be to set up the marketing profile. So again, um, just a reminder, only members with enhanced or unlimited permissions on the team will be able to edit or set that profile up. So you're going to find it the same way that you do the standard marketing profile. However, for easier navigation, I would recommend going to your name in the top right. And before you go down to settings, I would go ahead and toggle into the team account if you're not if you're not already in the team account that is. And then once we are in the team profile, we're going to go ahead and click on our name again in the top right and then we are going to go down to our settings. Okay. And then we are going to go over to the marketing profile by going over here on the left and clicking on the connect settings and then clicking marketing profile. Now, like I said, only enhanced or unlimited permissions are going to um, allow you to access to edit the team marketing profile. So we have our setup with just standard permissions so that you can see the difference um, if you're not sure if you have access or not. So once you click into the marketing profile after you have already clicked on the team pro account, you're going to notice that your marketing profile is going to look a lot like, it's going to look just like your normal marketing profile. That's because it, it is exactly the same marketing profile. This is if you do not have the correct permissions. So if you do have the correct permissions, it is going to look, why didn't it start off there? It's going to look something like this. So if you are in the team account, you have the correct permissions. When you click on marketing profile, you should see at the top team marketing profile. And then you should see the um, where it says like team logo. I'm just going to give everyone a second to kind of catch up just to be sure. I'm actually going to start a slideshow. There you go. All right, so there's going to be less options for the team marketing profile than there is going to be for your personal marketing profile. So if you're going through the marketing profile and you see um, a lot of those details, um, then most likely, again, you're in the personal marketing profile and not the team. Um, and that means you don't have access to the team marketing profile. So for the team marketing profile here, first you have your toggle, um, just as um, on the right hand side, which is what brands you're marketing to the team site. Uh, and then you're gonna have your team logo. So, the, so it does have a recommended size of 360 by 360. 
However, it is not required to be that size. Um, if your team logo looks a little distorted at all within that preview, it will correct itself on your marketing. So you don't need to crop that or adjust that for the logo. After you upload your team logo, uh, in your team name, if your team has a business slogan, however, this is not required. These are optional. The designation and credential credential slides also optional. If you um, don't need to put anything here, um, you can just simply go ahead and move along to the next section. which is going to be the affiliation. So if you are um, part of military, if you have family military, if you are just a big supporter of the military and you wanna add that, you can do so under the military affiliations. And then you have your bio below that. So the bio again is gonna be more, um, you're probably gonna want it to be a little bit more team oriented. Um, again, this is going to be a required field, but if you do not have a bio, a professional bio for your team set up or anything like that yet, you can just go ahead and put a period or you can use your personal bio um, in this space until you have it set up. That way it allows you to save your progress and move along. Um, and then below that, you're going to have to um, enter your office phone, your email address um, and your information down here. And then next is going to be your market center slash brokerage information. So um, with the team marketing profile, this doesn't really allow you to update the market center name. So if you're part of like a business center and this may not show correctly, unfortunately, there is no way that we are able to edit that information. Um, this is just how KW has it set up currently. However, in your personal marketing profile, this is able to be edited. So if you're part of a business center and this is showing incorrectly, then this should be the market center that the business center is branched off of. All right, and then next we have some market center information. And if you are not sure where to find your market center um, DBA logo, you should be able to find that through KW Connect. You can copy and paste this link into your URL and you should be able to find it there. Yeah. All right, so next is going to be the compliance section. So if you're part of a state, county, um, if you're MLS or if your office, um, or I'm sorry, if your board or if your office requires any kind of compliance to be added to your website, this is the section that is going to um, show that information where you can add it in. So any legal footer text that needs to be added um, or any legal footer links, you can add those here. So you'll be able to put the link title and then the URL to the link. Now, if you don't need these link titles and you show, you're showing that something is there, you are able to remove them by clicking on the trash cans over onto the right-hand side. And then next we have legal footer images. We don't really recommend too much adding a legal footer image here, only for the fact that this is such a small file that shows on the website. Um, any words and things like that aren't going to be very easily able to be made out. Um, and like I said, headshots or anything like that is just going to be very small. The only thing that you could possibly add here that we would kind of recommend is maybe like the realtor logo, the fair housing, things like that. Something that's really small, doesn't really have any words that if somebody needs to read, but you can just recognize it just because of the symbol alone. Next, we're gonna have our social media links. So the social media links, um, again, these are good. There's going to be like a little image under the headshot on the website where you can click on like the Facebook logo, the Twitter logo, and it's going to take the um, clients to the link that you add here. And then next is the Google Analytics ID. If you have Google Analytics ID set up, um, you can add the tracking number here, as well as there will be a spot on the back end of the website that it will need to be added as well. 
And then just be sure that once you have entered all your information, um, you go ahead and click save so you don't lose any of your progress. Again, guys, let me know if you have any questions um, on anything that we have gone through. All right, and then next we're gonna go ahead and see, once you have that information filled out, um, you're going to see the section at the top um, that's going to have you claim your subdomain. Now, if you have a team domain that is linked to a personal website and you want to move that over to the team website, you will have to be logged into the command account that owns that domain. And then you can go into the marketing profile and choose the transfer subdomain option. That will allow you to transfer that domain that you want to use from the personal website to the team website. And then it will allow you to choose, I'm sorry, then it will allow you to create a new domain for the personal website within the transfer. Uh, so once you have your marketing profile completed, uh, you can then go into the back end of your site a couple different ways. So you can either click on the edit my team sites within the marketing profile, or you can get to it through the consumer tab, um, which is now called the websites tab. So for this, I'm gonna to go to the websites tab for a couple things. Um, so I'm gonna jump back over to command. And then now we're gonna go ahead and go into the consumer tab. Also now it's changed to the websites, but sometimes it still shows consumer. It's gonna be the last option here on the left hand side. So now you should be seeing um, this new page that they just recently updated. It's going for the agent sites. Um, and then again, if you are on a team, um, you should see the team websites here as well, which would have the team website information as well. So from here, you are able to do a couple different things. You can click on the edit agent site option. Um, and then this is going to have the team information over here. Um, you can click homepage, and then there's going to be a couple different editing options, very simple edit options um, that you can choose from, such as the banner images, which is going, also known as the hero images. That's going to be the images here under the, the search section. You have the feature properties where you can um, update the headline title. You can update the description. Um, so again, feature properties, this is where you can change the verbiage. And then you also have your center point information, meaning this is the set location. Um, so when you set, say you don't have, uh, I'm sorry, if you set a specific address, you can set the radius within a certain mileage of this address to show properties um, on your feature properties from this location. It doesn't have to be a specific address. You can do like um, a town, things like that. You can also adjust the listing prices to be shown. And again, these are going to be just the very basic um, customizations for the website. Um, if to do anything more detailed, we will be going over that in just a little bit. And then you also have like the testimonial options where you can add in a testimonial. Um, if a client has already submitted a testimonial in order to add that to your website is going to be through the back end, which we'll kind of go over in just a moment. And then you have your blog list information here as well. Now we're going to actually go ahead and click the um, exit, but if you've made any updates to this, make sure you click publish for them to actually update onto your website. And keep in mind too, any edits that you make are not necessarily going to automatically be added to the website. Some of them do take a little bit of time. So I would recommend allowing up to like 20, 30 minutes before. Um, if you don't see them updated within that time, then feel free to reach out to us and see what may have happened. But we're going to go ahead and click on this X for a second. And then now you're going to see here at the top, there is this new settings um, tab as well, which it used to when you clicked on this website consumer icon, it would just automatically take you here. 
So for the manage, um, for the settings part of this here, you're going to see that you have your subdomain, which if you are under your team account, it should have your um, team information. You have your app URL settings, which this is going to be your personal app. Any of your team app information is going to show here under the team referral links. So you have like your team website URL, you have your team app link, and then you have your team member app link, which is going to differentiate you within the team using your KWUID. Now, if you want to utilize these for any of your marketing, any campaigns, things like that, you can do so by clicking the little copy icon right here. Uh, below that, you should have some preferences. Um, basically, just you want to display Keller Home Loans, um, Keller Covered Neighborhoods on app and sites or just the app here. And then down at the bottom, you have your forced registration option. So this is going to set any property limit searches. Um, so if a, a potential new client goes to your website, do you want them to be able to view only two properties before they have to register an account? Um, which if they do register an account, all that information is going to go to your database and then they'll be able to view properties. You'll be able to see what properties they're viewing. If they're liking properties, you can create safe searches, things like that. So it's not necessarily a bad thing to have this. Um, some people think of being forced, you know, it's a bad thing. So this is up to you. You can have it to where they can view no properties or they can view as many as they want with them never having to register. That is completely your choice. So now there's two ways to go into the back end of the settings on your website. So you could do the edit my website here, or there's also that option from the my websites when you do that, and then you can click expert mode. So either way, both of these are going to take you, I'm not sure why I did that, um, into the back end of your website. Let's do it this way. So now that we are here in the back end, also no, now known as expert mode, um, there's going to be a couple different things. So if you are on a team, which, you know, this is the team websites, you're going to see that you have your name right here. It may be your name or may also show the team name. If this is showing your team name, you should also see the team website URL here. That means you are in the team website back end uh, and not the personal. So in order to make the switch, if you're seeing your personal, you're going to click on your name. And then you should see the team name within these um, within this drop down. If you hold any leadership roles, you will also see the market center websites back here, too. So just be sure you know what, team, what account you are currently in when you are making any kind of edits back here. So now we see the dream team, we see the dream team URL. So we can safely say that we are in the team account. Anybody that may have just joined us, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat. We will also be circling back at the end to kind of go over any questions that you may have. Okay. I'm just giving everyone a sec, kind of second to catch up. All right, so some of the default pages that you see here are going to be the same as the personal site, um, which we will go over in those website overview. However, i um, go over this briefly. So we, so we have the about the agent page that pulls from the profile. We have um, the, that pulls from the marketing profile. We have the meet the team page. This is just for the team sites. So this is where your team members will be listed. Um, we have the home page, and then we have the blog page. So we'll just go ahead and start from the top of this list and work our way down. So that way we're not going back and forth and jumping all over. So I'm going to go ahead and click into the um, about the agent. 
So this is going to pull in the Rainmaker's information. So if you are wondering why it's not showing your headshot photo or your details, that's because it's pulling from the Rainmaker's details. And those will need to be adjusted in the Rainmaker's personal marketing profile. So you do have the option to hide these items. Um, so we can change this from display to hide. And we can hide that in um, agent information. You can see over here, right next to this information, this is going to be a little preview window. So any information that we're updating on the left, you can kind of see it over here onto the right. Uh, next, we can see the bio. We can hide the bio information if we wanted to. Um, and then there's also the agent details um, that you can hide as well. However, just keep in mind that pulling, um, keep in mind it is pulling from the um, the Rainmakers account. So if this is information you're not wanting to see or needs to be updated, they're going to need to do it through their account. We're going to go ahead and just leave that information it's currently. So any information that you update, say even on here, you're going to want to make sure that you click save um, if you're wanting to make any edits. But we're going to go ahead and click on this KW logo, which is going to take us back to our dashboard. And we're just going to click leave because we're not going to make any of the edits to that currently. So next we have the meet the team um, section. Okay. So for the meet the team page here, the first thing we have here is going to be the company profile. This is going to be your background images um, for the header here, which is similar to the hero images on the homepage. So you can add images by clicking either the upload files link, or you if you already have the images uploaded, um, you can click on the add item, and this will pull up any of the images that you have previously added. I'm not sure why it's not pulling up. Oh, because I'm... So I would expect that to just pop up. Sorry. Um, so, okay. So when you see these here, you can just click on it and it's going to pull open the box. So any of those, um, so any uploaded images on your site, those should stay saved within the section whenever you go to add additional images uh, to areas on your website. So next under that is going to be the meet the team section. And again, you do have the option to hide, um, to display or hide any of these on any of the pages. So if there are certain items that you don't want to show, um, you can just simply hide them. So you do have the title here that you can customize if you would like a different verbiage. Um, the below that you do have the um, description. So again, these are just going to be uh, verbiage preferences, which are going to show here. You do have your featured team members. Um, so with your featured team members, it's going to be the um, agents that are currently on that team. You are able to click, drag, and rearrange those if you would like. Um, if you want to change the order that they're showing in, completely up to you. Again, these are going to be preferential changes. Um, then you are also able to add team members. So if a team member is not currently showing, um, say they may be new on the team, and it's not automatically pulling on, you can simply click the plus sign. It will add another line, and then you can click the drop down, and you will see these extra people here. So, like Laura Frost, oh, she is already on there. There she is. I just had to scroll down a little bit. Now, below that, you're going to see the section additional partners. Say you have a virtual assistant you want added um, onto your website, but they 
do not have a command account or if you just have somebody working for you again that's not in command um whatever however the case may be if they are not showing you can add them in manually so when you add them in manually you simply click add you can click create new and this is going to ask you for some information about them so you do have the um, the name, first, first name is required. However, last name is not, nor full name. You're able to put their title in. Um, so if you want to show virtual assistant, um, partners, whatever title you want to give them. And you can also upload their images. You can add their phone number and email address. Once you have their information added, you can simply click publish. And then once you click publish, you should see that there is a green notification here that says that it was saved. Once it's you see that um, notification, just simply click back. And then you should be able to reselect the box here and add the name of the person that you just created. So let's see, test associate. So let's say we just create a test test. And then when we scroll down, we should see that new person added here. Now, the people that we add under the additional partners, we are able to rearrange the order that they show up in as well. However, they we cannot rearrange these with and mix them into these ones. So these ones are always going to show first on the websites, and then these are going to be filtered in after. So you can rearrange them just only within these three sections, within the, these three. Like that. All right, and then we're gonna go ahead and just pull that back up. And then the next section is going to be the preferred vendors. So you do have the option to add the preferred vendors onto your um, onto your team website, similar to you do on the personal websites. So you can add in the vendors by clicking this link here. And this will open through a third party when, there it goes. Um, called Move Easy. So if we click on that link, this will open up a new tab for us. At least it should, there it goes. I don't know why it's been a little slow today. So to add vendors, we can click on the add vendor button in the top right. Here you can enter the uh, vendor the vendor's name, the vendor's URL, um, website, if there's a specific website, that's where we're going to the URL. If you have a specific contact within that company um, that you, you communicate with, you can add their information here, their name and their email. Um, and then telephone, you can put their direct number, or if you just have a general company number, you can add that here as well. Next, you have some vendor type um, and what type of vendor they are. Uh, what counties they service, um, and then you can also add their logo, company logo here also. Uh, once you have their, inter their information entered, you can simply click on the add vendor at the bottom. And then those will appear under the preferred vendors list on the, um, on the website. So they're going to show down here under the preferred vendor section. And then there's also a toggle to show the market center partners down here at the bottom. Uh, again, so there's a toggle to show the market center partners down here at the bottom. So if your market center staff has added vendors, within the market center partner section on the back end, um, then you can pull those into your site automatically by toggling this on as well. So again, that's gonna be another personal preference. You can also choose to hide the um, preferred vendor section if you don't want that to show on this page. And then once you have your changes made, be sure you are clicking the save button in the top right. So you do have the um, the green saved option uh, there you go, that shows right here. Then you can simply click return to dashboard or you can click on the KW logo 
to take you back to the dashboard as well. So after the Meet the Team page, we do have our homepage. This is going to be the um, very similar page as the homepage on the personal website. So I'm not gonna to get too detailed here since we do cover this in our other classes. We'll just kind of do a brief overview here. Um, so you do have your title. Um, you're gonna have your boxes for the, um, the hero images as well. You do also have the option to hide the for rent. So if you want it to just be the buy and not the rent, you are able to turn that off here. Um, again, and title is just going to be your preference, how you prefer what to be said. So instead of find your, let's find it, I'm sorry, let us find your dream home. Um, you can reword that however you would like. Now for the featured images um, slash video, we have not seen that the video has quite been working currently. I think that is something that is new that they're working on, but pretty soon you are able to add a video here. We just know that it's gonna to need to be hosted through, like you're gonna to have to upload it to YouTube and then add the YouTube link in order to play the video. It's just currently not operational. Um, but you are able to add your custom images um, or custom video here once that has been fixed, the, the kinks have been worked out. You can add images by clicking upload files or add image like we did before. Um, this will add another box. And then you would select it from there, or you can do the add image here, which is going to add the square. You can give that a click and it's gonna open up this with all your pre um, added images you have done. So we can click that and you see now that we have a fourth image added in here. So we're gonna go ahead and collapse that and expand the next one. So this is going to be for the um, the feature properties. So again, you have the option for display or hide it, um, your choice. Um, you do have the title and a description. Which I'm not sure why it's feed, not feeding over the information here, but. Um, and then you have the, two, the options of dynamic or basic. So dynamic is going to allow you to add a center point. So again, this could be a specific address. You can also change this to be um, a certain zip code. You can enter just a zip code or a city. And then it's going to ask you to how many you want max to display and how, within how many miles of this location that you added. If you are close to the, the border of another state and you're not licensed in that state, um, you can also choose to um, show only properties in that state province that you have selected. That way you're not pulling in properties on another state that you are not licensed to sell real estate in. Um, now you can also choose to, instead of dynamic basic, which is going to give you the option to only add um, listings that you choose. So you would just enter in the address by clicking the plus sign. You'd enter the address or the MLS number to add them in. And those will only display the ones that you choose. They will not pull in any random listings like the other one. Dynamic is going to add listings from the area. Basic is going to be the ones you put. Now with dynamic though, you are still able to add pinned listings included in the other ones that it's pulling in. So you will just need to click the plus sign, add the address or the MLS, and then the properties you choose to add are going to be the first ones to show on your website. And then the random ones that's pulling in from the MLS will be shown after. You're also able to filter. So you can do uh, my team listings only. You can do my affiliate brokerages or market centers. Um, so then it will pull just those listings as well. There are some more filter options down below. Um, you know, you can narrow it down to whatever options you would like shown on your website. Let me go ahead and collapse this section. And then we have our testimonials. This is where you're going to be able to add testimonials that clients have already submitted onto your website. So first you have your display or hide option. You have the title. So check out what our clients are saying about us. Again, that's going to be a verbiage preference, completely up to you, as well as the description. If you want one, that's going to be, it's going to show right here underneath the title and in between the actual testimonials. 
So again, there's a dynamic and a basic. Um, you can sort by the newest published date, max number to display between one and 20. And then there's gonna be filtering options. Do you want um, city, star, state, zip code? And then right here below, you're gonna see the feature one. This is where you're gonna be able to add them. So you click the plus sign, it's gonna add another box. And then it's going to ask you to, if you wanna create a new one where you can add one in, say somebody left, a client left one on a Google review, you can manually add it in here, but you would have to just fill out the information, type it in, or if they've already submitted it, it will show down below here, which we already have the one, which it'll just show re-added again. So we're just gonna go ahead and delete the one, but that's how you would go ahead and add it in. If a client has submitted it, they will show down here in this list. Now keep in mind, if they are adding it to your personal website, it will not, the testimony will not show here because it wasn't added through your team website. It was added on the personal. So if you wanted to transition it over here to the team website, you would need to manually add it in. Let's see, we have a question. What is the difference between dynamic and basic under the, the item stream? So the difference between dynamic and basic here, it doesn't give you the option to have all those different filters, which to be honest, I'm not 100% sure like, um, when, when it comes to like the newest published date um, or oldest published date, that's the only kind of sort there. But filtering when it comes to like all match, any match, I'm not really sure what those are about. We haven't really kind of figured that out. But that's really the only difference, there, and which isn't much. All right. So next, we're going to have the blog section. Um, so again, if you want to display or hide it, um, you can also retitle it, the description. Um, this does give a, a dynamic advanced basic, which we do have a class um, that we do kind of on this a little bit more in depth to go through those for you. But you can do the blog post. Um, if you are a big blogger and you upload a lot of different blogs here, there's going to be a lot of different options to select. You have your newest published date, or you can do oldest. You can also do alphabetical A through Z or Z through A. How many blogs do you want displayed, filtered? And then you can select the featured blogs here to show on the page as well. All right, so now once you again, once you make any edits, be sure you are clicking save. And then we're gonna go ahead and return to the home page. All right, now we're going to go ahead and for the um, last little part, we're going to go ahead and click on these hamburger lines up here in the top left. Um, and this is going to open down a drop down where you should should see the organization site. If you might have to click this admin arrow drop down, but click on the organization site. Um, there are some things on here that I would not recommend playing with too much um, or really editing. So the name, the dream team, if you edit the name on here, um, this is only going to reflect, it's going to reflect differently than what the team name actually is through KW. So just be careful of that, um, especially for any compliance reasons. I wouldn't really mess with that too much. You do have the option to change the color scheme on the website. So there are a couple new ones that they just came out with. Um, so you can play around with these color themes. You can select it, save it, go check it out on the website and play with it that way. Um, you have your Merck Center name. Again, I wouldn't really, that's another one I wouldn't really mess with or the agent or Rainmaker name. You do have the Rainmaker or agent KW UID. Again, wouldn't really play around with that too much. But then you do have the Google Google Analytics ID tag. This is a, the second place where you're going to want to add that Google Analytics ID if you have it set up. Um, just like in the marketing profile I mentioned earlier, this is going to be the second place you want to make sure it gets added. And you can click save. And then below that, you do have your navigation to, if you want to create a custom navigation on your website, um, you can play around with that. We do have a video on that. And then there's also a KW article about this. We we do assist with this. However, um, we don't completely do it because these are very tricky. There are some things we can assist with that. So we just highly recommend checking out the video on our YouTube channel for that.
All right, so we're just going to go ahead and give you a look at the um, team websites. So again, the team website, this is going to look just like the personal website, only it's going to have more team logo branding to it. So you have your meet the team option here, um, your search properties, you have a blog drop down, and then you have your more, which is going to be these extra pages that maybe you add, or if you have us add extra pages for you, this is where they will live. Or for the login feature for your clients, um, again, this is going to be a client login feature. Um, you have the login here where they can go in and create themselves an account, and you can kind of track and monitor their information from here. And then as you scroll down, you have your feature properties, your testimonials, and then your blog information, as well as your team contact us. All right, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording.